hey y'all come through hair <laughs> yeah i still haven't washed my hair it has been baby look at my cute little uh, neighbor from paris texas it has been like three weeks i'm gonna put on some lipstick because i feel like that'll complete my outfit yeah i have on this cute I have on this cute, uh, I should show y'all, but this is, a this is, a the story time. I have on this cute outfit. Anyway, let's get into the story time, girl. I kind of have an idea how I want part, is it six or seven, y'all? 6.5 to go. And this is going to be, um, 18 plus because something's going to pop off. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Yeah, I like to have y'all probably think that she drinks a lot. Actually, I don't. I probably drink first of all, I never feel this all the way. Girl, please. Which is actually good for your heart and it's good to calm my calm my nerves, girl. Calm my nerves. So we have ended the previous um story with La no, Mont with Byron confronting or asking Kendra if she will be willing to visit some nursing home nursing homes um for his aunt Nora. Aunt Nora Alzheimer's has gotten worse. She is also falling down a lot, which is a sign of of uh when the Alzheimer's and dementia actually gets worse. Falling down, confusion is wor is even worse. Um, a lot of the times she doesn't doesn't even know who Lamont is. So there are not a lot of nursing homes in this small town, you guys. There's only about three of them. And so Kendra does go with Lamont while another family friend watches Aunt Nora at home. And she's watching Young and the Restless Girl still watching her stories. And so fast forward to the day of when Aunt Nora actually is moving into the nursing home and um, Byron has asked if Kendra would be there for support and she's like, absolutely. Now y'all, Kendra is 7.5 months pregnant, y'all. That belly is, is poking out. And so, she, no issue. She's not having any issues and Lamont, trifling ass was able to make the the previous now he missed the one and byron came he was upset about that one so then he he came to this one so anyway this is the day that like i said aunt nora is moving in to what what could be the name of the nursing home great doesn't matter she's moving into the nursing home and byron is so nervous you guys again miss nora aunt nora has raised um lamont Byron. Aunt Nora has raised Byron as her own child, even though that's technically his his aunt and she is um that's her nephew. So Byron is really quiet as him and Kendra and Aunt Nora is in the back. They have packed a few of her belongings for this um assisted living and uh she is getting ready to basically be walked in. So Byron is quiet and um Kendra's like, It's okay, Byron. Trust me, you she will be fine here. You you're making the best decision for her. And he's like, I know, I just it's I just feel like I I wish I could have done more. And she's like, This is you doing more. And, and one of the nurses come out and greets Aunt Nora and Kendra and, By and Byron and Byron reaches down because Aunt Nora is short, y'all. Aunt Nora is barely five feet tall. He leans down and hugs her and kisses her. And that's when Aunt Nora looks up, up at him and says, Why are you crying, baby? And, oh, y'all, this is so sad to me. Byron's like, I just, I'm so sorry. And Aunt Nora's like, don't be sorry, baby. I'll see you tonight. She's not realizing that she won't see Byron tonight, maybe in a few more days, but not tonight, Aunt Nora. Aunt Nora's like, yeah, so make sure you get the nice TV dinner that I like. And he's like, all right, Aunt Nora. And so he hugs her and the nurse smiles at them and she walks her out to the um, uh, front of the, uh, she walks her to her room and Byron turns around. That's when he starts do doing that hurtful, silent crying like tears are just coming down but he's not making any noise oh god that is the worst type of cry Kendra goes up to him and she grabs his hand and she leans in and she hugs him and they're there hugging for a while 
And so um, they walk outside and the clouds are starting to come in and it's gray skies because it's getting ready to storm. And so Byron's like, let me go ahead and get you home before um, the storm comes. So he's getting there and it's slowly raining. By the time they do get home, because the nursing home is about 15 to 20 minutes away from Kendra's house, it is pouring. And so they're just sitting in Byron's car in front of the house while it's raining more than likely Lamont's ass is inside you know in his office you know so he's quiet you know Byron's quiet he's just thinking about you know and so she's like are you okay this is Kendra are you okay Byron he's like yeah I am he said I'm sorry I just it's just been a bit much you know um he said but you know the only thing that good that's happened to me this year is working for you guys and that's when Kendra smiles. She's like, well, I'm pretty sure there's other things that has happened. He's like, no, you don't understand. I feel like, you know, things haven't been right lately. And then having, you know, my aunt, her Alzheimer's is getting worse. But I really have enjoyed working here. And so Kendra looks at him and she's like, well, maybe I can talk to Lamont about it. And we can see if there's, you know, any way that we can keep you on any longer. And that's when Byron looks at her. He's like, I would like that. And without even thinking about it, you guys, Byron leans over and plants a kiss right on Kendra. She doesn't stop him. She knows what he's doing. And she's taken aback because he has the softest lips she has ever felt. Now, they're kissing. They're basically making out. That's when Kendra hears a sound that says, hello? Hello? And she looks down. She looks down in her lap. Child, her belly gonna accidentally speed down Tiffany. <laughs> Hello, Kendra, is that you? She's like, oh my God, Tiffany, I'm so sorry. I, I accidentally called you. You know what, Um, uh, I'll, I'll give you a call later on. She's like, okay, Kendra, are you okay? Byron was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. I shouldn't have done that. She's like, no, no, no. If I didn't want to, I, I would have stopped you. He's like, do you want me to continue? And she's like, no, I think I'm good. And so that's when um, Byron was like, oh, let me look back here and see if I got a jacket or something. So he reaches in the back and he finds a jacket. He gives it to Kendra and she uses it to go inside. And so Byron's going home, y'all. He's driving. He's like, what am I doing? I think I like this woman. She's married. She's way out of my league. She's pregnant. I don't know what I'm doing. So Kendra what makes her way. She goes up. She knocks on the door to Lamont's office. He doesn't answer. So she lets herself in. She sees that he has dozed off at the desk. And his laptop is still up. So she goes around. And when she's about to close it, she hears a ding notification. She looks... You know, she doesn't want to be nosy, but she looks down at Lamont. And she sees that he's been, he's possibly has been drinking. His ass is knocked out. So she clicks on the web browser and it comes up because again, the notification popped up. You know how when you just have your home screen up on the desktop, the notification popped up. She opens it up and it says plus 450. And she's like, this bastard, what is he doing? So she checks it and it shows that he has been bidding again, you guys. He has been online gambling and her heart starts to race. And she's like, so she doesn't touch it. She clicks out of it. She doesn't touch it. She leaves it up and she leaves Lamont in there, right? Kendra goes up and she sits down and she's like, I can't believe this. But then she started thinking about the kiss from <laughs> The next day, Kendra is in, um, she's in the living room, just going through, looking at stuff for the nursery because they're gonna get ready to decorate and paint the nursery. I mean, they're getting ready to really decorate the nursery. Lamont comes down damn near 11 o'clock in the morning because he was drunk last night and passed up and he's, he's out of it. So he's like, hey baby, so, um, What's that? What did you you make breakfast? She's like, yeah, I made some French toast and eggs. And go ahead and have you some. He's like, all right then. So he goes to fix himself a plate. And so Kendra's thinking, should she bring it up? No. So she's thinking, you know what? I'm not gonna bring it up right now. I I don't have time for this. You know, I got I got too much stuff going on. So she goes 
upstairs as she's going upstairs she gets a call and it's tiffany so um tiffany's like hey girl um what did you and your belly want the other night <laughs> what did you and your belly want the other night she said girl i was in the car with byron and my phone accidentally and tiffany said whoa 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 what wait a minute you were in the car with who She's like, I was in the car with Byron. He was dropping me off and my phone accidentally, you know, it bumped into you. And and she's like, huh? She's like, y'all sure have been spending a lot of time with each other. I got something to say. Please, I, I'm I'm asking you right now, Tiff. Please don't don't judge me. And so Tiff is like, oh shit, I'm ready, girl. Well, what what is it? <laughs> Y'all, Tiff Tiffany is my alter ego. Tiffany's like, oh shit, girl, I'm ready now. What is it? And so Kendra goes on to explain how one night she had asked, you know, Byron to stay over. And while they were asleep, you know, somehow the pillow fell over and Byron was aroused. And his little Peter, his good sized Peter rubbed up against her back and that was that's basically what what woke her up. Here's Tiffany. Oh girl, did you get a look at it? What did it look like? And so the kid just like Tiffany, no, I did not see it. I just felt it on my uh, felt it on my back and that's what woke me up. She's like, girl, damn girl, you, you, if you could feel it through the through the sweatpants, you know it's something vicious. So Kendra was like, no, let, let me finish. She's, and so she's going on to explain how, you know, Byron has been confiding to her about things that are going on with his aunt and that he dropped her, when he dropped her off, that he leaned in and kissed her and she didn't stop him. And so Kendra is waiting and she's like, hello? Cause still usually tip me. She's like, hello. She's like, girl, I think I'm gonna need a cold shower after this story. Kendra's like, Tiffany, I'm serious. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm seven months pregnant and I just kissed another man. And I'm telling you, the way he was looking at me, I could tell that he's possibly he's possibly starting to develop feelings. And that's when Tiffany cut her off. She said, Kendra, are you serious? All the bullshit Lamont puts you through, that lying, that cheating. Oh, we're not even gonna talk about losing all of your money. All of your money, your cars, you having to downsize from your beautiful home. Girl, please, I would not feel guilty at all about kissing that little fine thing. That's the difference between me and you. I do feel a little guilty and it is wrong. Oh, Tiffany said, well, all I'm trying to say, Kendra, is that it was a little kiss. I wouldn't take it any further than that. It, you know, you can't turn back time. You can't say you didn't happen. Hell, I, I wish it would have happened to me, truth be told. But you just can't, you know, you can't erase the past. And she said, well, what I would do is be careful with how much time I be spending with old boy because, girl, you don't want to slip up and fall on something. So Kendra's like, that's not happening, you know, even though... Lamont and I really haven't been doing anything that much lately. It's been like two or three weeks since we've had sex. I mean, I know I put on a little weight, but um, yeah, he seems like he's really not even interested. That's when Ken, that's when Tiffany was like, say what? Oh, hell no, nah, sis, you get a free pass then with y'all. And so y'all, they hang up. And while Kendra was on the phone with Tiffany, Byron had sent her a text message that said, thank you again for today. And if I ever make you feel uncomfortable, I do apologize. Kendra looked at the text message. She thought about what Tiffany said. And she sent him a message back and was basically like, look, I know we talked about boundaries, but Lamont's gonna be gone tomorrow. Um, and I was wondering if you would be okay with coming over here for dinner. Byron responded like this, baby. He's like, yeah, just let me know what time. Ciao. That is it for part 6.57, y'all.